So what are you going to cook up today? Well, I love leek and eggplant or aubergine, and so I'm making a, a tart tartan oh, of it. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> With um, lots of fresh herbs. Oh, that's brilliant. So what are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm doing a, a lentil dish. Um, I, I, I love lentils and <laughs> I eat too many, and can I just ear bash everyone for a minute? Um, they're a nitrogen replacing crop, which I love. And I'm going to cook a dal, but I've actually taken an Indian lentil, which is a tour dal. If you can't get it, get a chana dal, which is a baby chickpea, um, like the chickpea kernel. But one of these yellow dals, now this would have been a brown or a green lentil, but it's been hulled, as in skinned and split. So the cooking time's greatly reduced. So soak them up, a couple of cups. Now look, I soak these overnight. Never throw that stuff away. It's just so starchy. Look at you can feel the but starchiness. But what are you going to do with it? Cook them in it again. Ah, I just wanted to take them out to show okay. everyone. But so many people discard their their lentil water that they've soaked it in, and th there might be a reason for that. But for me, it's got so much flavour. It creams up the lentils beautifully, and minimum amount of water when I cook lentils, and no salt. And I think we've been through yes, that. Yes, no salt we? because it it take, toughens and takes longer to cook. Yeah. And uh, I just got this ginger, which is about a thumb, which is skin on, sliced up, not young, not old, just in between the ginger, <laughs> couple of cloves of garlic, and just give them a mash and chuck them into the water and bring them up from cold. Never use hot water to start because your cooking time will greatly increase. So these are quite a quick cook lentil. They'll probably be about 20 minutes of simmering. Then I can start cooking Maggie. Okay. Well, I've got an eggplant. It was quite a large eggplant. And so I've had it um, soaking in water for about half an hour with salt. Now, the only reason for that is this is a, quite a rich dish. And so it will take up less oil when I cook it. You have to drain it and then in a clean, dry tea towel, really get it dry before you cook it. Otherwise, you won't get the burnish and you'll also spit and it will be difficult to, to cook. So some salt on that. Now I'm pre-cooking the leeks. I've made them into little batons and I want to cook them standing up like this. I want them to caramelize either side and I am going to the trouble of keeping that position. Oh, well, that's the idea anyhow. I've got the eggplant oil. I've got really hot before I can put anything in and I've salted them in the tea towel. I need to get that burnish on them because I really need the colour and then I'll get it into the oven. So well, if you're fiddling, while I'm fiddling, I'll come and fiddle. You can work. Yeah, <laughs> like I've got a pan ready. I've got a little bit of ghee and you can afford to be quite oily in a dal because there's nothing to carry the flavour. So it is a bit important and I, I like to mix my ghee with a, a little bit of rice bran or peanut oil. That's the cumin and then Fold in the mustard and be careful of the heat at this stage because cumin and mustard can bitter. You know, start gently and just keep an eye on it. As soon as you hear the first couple of crackles from the mustard seed, it's time to temper the heat down with the onions. Now, the onions need to be sautéed for sweetness, but while I'm cooking that, I just want to show one thing. And this is what I mean about using the water that you soak the lentils with that it's starting to get a little bit creamy because of the starches. And a lot of people, they say skim all of the scum off when you're cooking lentils. I don't care, Maggie. I just have it all. It doesn't bother me in the least. And they're a very quick cook, so they're nearly, nearly there already. Well, I'm just going to put these in the oven for about 10 minutes so they cook through but don't collapse. And this is really nice because I can really smell coming now. The onion's starting to sweat down. So this is the garlic and ginger paste. Just garlic and ginger blended together. Skin on in the ginger. About a tablespoon. It's in equal ratio, the garlic and ginger. And then the spices can go in. And so turmeric. Now, coriander. And the coriander is the one spice that you can go a bit silly with because it, it's just an amalgamating spice. It doesn't drive flavour on its own. So there's a good, you know, two teaspoons of that. Now, I've got a little bit of chilli and I want it to be Maggie friendly, so I'm only putting a, a splash of cashmere chilli. I'd put that much in. <laughs> I bet you would. You know how I am. Uh. And a few, probably three or four chopped tomatoes. And the final thing would be fresh chilli. But again, I'm going to leave that out. I'm going to chop that up and put that on mine. Maybe. Just on yours. Yeah. 
And then all I have to do is fold it together, Maggie. Well, I think my leeks will be ready. They've had 10 minutes in the oven. My concept was to have the leeks still standing up, but it's just an aesthetic. It's not essential. The eggplant, I'm just going to put all these pieces in amongst the little forest of leeks. I thought I'd go a bit way out here. You've got me intrigued now. <laughs> now, I've made a sugar syrup. The sugar and the water boiled down like we've done so many times before, but finished off with some vina cotto, or you could use balsamic, because this is a savoury dish. So splash that all over the leeks and the eggplant. And now I have lots of fresh herbs. A tablespoon of oregano and lemon thyme and the same of mint. So lots of fresh herbs here. Some salt and pepper. And see how attractive it looks? It looks great. <laughs> I'm going to spoil it now. I'm going to put a lid on it. So I think to say a tart tartan is sort of going a bit far. It's just a pastry top and the pastry has to be larger than the dish. And I just use my sour cream pastry because it kind of does all. And because it's just like a dinner plate, yep. when it comes out, it'll go upside down. It doesn't actually matter that this is all hot. I think it's a tart to time. You've got <laughs> caramel, you've got upside down and you've got pastry. And I'll put it in at 200 degrees for about 10 minutes and then down to 180. Okay. Well, I've just got to fold this together, Maggie. What I've got here is two pots of mush. Beautifully <laughs> creamy, mushy lentils and very starchy liquid. That'll give it a bit of body. And then the tomato mix, which is all of the spices and flavourings. So fold the two together. So lentils into tomato or vice versa, doesn't really matter. Now, that would be fairly much what you would see in a lot of places. I like my doughs really watery. I like them like a soup with a few lentils. So I'm really, really watering it back. Okay. So it, it will need a fair old whack of salt because there's nothing mm. so far, nothing. And Maggie, you're going to be my official chapati chef. Oh, okay. So I've got a little griddle Pressure. plate. And I think we'll go for a decent temperature. Okay. I'll pop my little lentil pot down for a minute. And this is a chapati dough. I will put the recipe on the website, but really, really simple. It's a bit of atta flour, which is like a very whole meal sort of flour. Yes. With some ghee rubbed into it and some warm water and a quick knead. It's a really simple bread. And the way to do these... I need instructions. I've never done them. Haven't you? No. A well, bit of oil? Well, I think you'll be perfect. Actually, you can probably just a tiny smear, just a tiny amount. That's it. <laughs> right. Get them to about, I don't know, a two mil thickness. And you just whack the chapati down yep. and just press him down. Okay. And what you should get is a few blisters once we get up to temperature. See how it's just going a little yeah. bit pale? Just a couple of blisters will do it. And then toss it. And then turn it over and do the same. Okay. So I've got my dough here, nice and watery, little bit over seasoned. And now lemon juice. And this is to your palate, but believe me, the more the merrier. I think we're getting there. Bit more? Little bit more so it all goes kind of white. Okay. I love telling her what to do, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bit of tamarind concentrate as well because I love the sour. This is quite concentrated, so I'm just going to put a little bit in. Oh, Maggie, that's, that's, you're a chapati chef. <laughs> Fantastic. Now I've just got to recheck the seasoning for balance. I reckon we're pretty spot on. Now, final garnishes are chopped tomatoes. I'm going to put chopped chilli, but the coriander and the tomatoes are definite for everyone. And then ladle it out into bowls. See how watery this is? Yeah. And it's almost like a breakfast style. It's just really easy going, really easy eating. And chuck the fresh coriander and chilli in. Uh, sorry, coriander and tomato and chilli for me. Right, that's mine. Have I ruined it? Have I burnt it? That is really good. You're, you're the queen. I put more oil on it. <laughs> that, <laughs> she's good. I'll put this back. I like the way she breaks the rules for the greater good. So... Shall we eat mine first and then pull yours out the, well, the oven? Well, I, I want to turn mine over. Will yours wait a second? Yeah, it can, it can sit there. It's um, bulletproof, Maggie. Well, I've got this one I took out of the oven half an hour ago. Yep. I should have a different shape, really. But I wanted to have it in a bowl. Oh, look at that. I've got some fresh mint. Even though I've got mint in here, I think it just needs the freshness of the freshly chopped mint. 
I don't want to eat it. It looks too good. <laughs> I want to try yours first, though. Well, it's an acquired taste. It's about sour and coriander. Oh, sour and coriander, I do. OK. So? Mix it through a bit and then just dip a bit of chapati in and that'll help carry the flavour along. I love it. I could easily make a meal of that. Yeah. And, and be absolutely delighted. Well, I'm kind of pleased with that, mm. Maggie. <laughs> like I've achieved something. I like it. Mm. But no. I want to get into that. OK. I thought some goat's curd, some nice soft goat's curd on it. That's enough. Beautiful. So let's have a taste. Oh, that smells really good. I deem this a touch of time because you've got some serious caramel going on here and a very, very nice caramel. But is it too sweet? No. There's no way that's too sweet. You know, the caramel's not sugar sweet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's vegetable sweet. Yeah, it's fantastic.